Greetings and felicitations once again, fellow modelers. Welcome. It's been about a month since I put out a movie, maybe a little more. We got a lot in this video, a lot to catch up with. We've got a lot of original series stuff in this video. We're going to look at the uh, Martian Mars Attacks model. We're going to look at electronics and several other things. There's tips and tricks and this and that and another thing. So, let's get to it. And here we have the Mobius Models Kit Review, number 47. Woohoo! And we're looking at the Battlestar Galactica Viper Mark II. Love this kit. This is probably the third one I've built. I've got one I'm going to finish up, but I wanted to show real quickly a couple of simple steps. Now, <clears throat> As with most of their models, all the details have really nice, sharp, clean edges. They're easy to get out of the sprue. There's very little cleanup. The directions are a little odd. They're different, kind of a different approach. And the thing about the entire hull on this ship is that everything interlocks like a 3D puzzle, which is rather fascinating, but it takes a little getting used to. At any rate, I love this kit. I think this is a great little kit. Um, what I did is I pre-assembled it, well, most of it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it just like that with all the interlocking pieces pushed up tight together, shoot the top and sides with primer, let that dry, and flip it over, shoot the bottom and the back with primer, let that dry, and then go over everything with a base coat. Then, before I start final assembly, I'm going to go in and detail the cockpit and finish it before I put everything together because the two sections, the two halves of the main fuselage go are side by side, port and starboard. So you have to have the cockpit done before you start assembling the fuselage. At any rate, we will check back with this very soon. Okay, here we have the Lindbergh Alien from Independence Day, ID4. Uh, not a lot good to say about this model, sorry. I didn't like the way it went together. Um, don't like the pose at all. Altogether, I'm not really impressed, so I can't really give a good kit review. So, since I can't say a whole lot positive, I'm going to have nothing to say. I cannot recommend this kit. I got this kit for $1.65 plus shipping and handling and I'm still not impressed in the least. Okay, on to the next kit review. Okay, so we've covered the entire thing top and bottom thus far with primer. Painted primer in the cockpit assembled and painted the details on the uh, landing gear primed the pilot and got everything looking nice and smooth so here's what we're going to do we're going to shoot everything with a coat of flat white and come back and start assembling and detailing this thing this great and wonderful Mobius Models Mark II Viper. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we're back to white. I have to hold the base because it's gotten warm and the parts don't want to stick together anymore. Anyway, more to come on this. Hang tight. And here we have another Lindbergh model kit review. This is a retro 1960s old school moonship 196 scale from Lindbergh. This is an old kit, well a repop of an old kit. I didn't even realize until I had the box open and shut off the lights to the garage that it glowed in the dark. <laughs> great kit. I mean it's a great retro kit. It, all the parts don't fit perfectly. You know I'm not going to give it four stars or two thumbs up or anything like that 
but it's a good little retro kit. Now let's have a look at some of the parts. You can see I pulled everything off of the trees and this is going to be an easy build. I mean there's just a few pieces. What I'm going to try to do is go with a painted version but keep some of the glow in the dark stuff so we'll see how that goes. I got this really cheap off of eBay. If you can pick up one of these old retro kits, I suggest you try it. All right, on to the next thing. All right, as you can see, I had the underneath section right here taped together with a piece of masking tape. Now, I, none of this is glued together. I'm going to hold these pieces and shoot everything underneath with a coat of flat white. Then I'm going to pull the rear end off of the engines, the exhaust ports, shoot, uh, tape them off a bit, shoot them with primer and then with black. Then I'm going to, as you can see here also, none of this was glued together. Oopsie. None of this is glued together. I'm going to work on the interior a little bit and move forward on this. This is a really easy build once you get down to it. Well, here we are out in the garage, and as you can see, I've been printing up some decals. I've got some original series decals for custom names and numbers of various different scales. The Work B decals for the 350 refit. The Rec Deck decal for the 350 refit. These are the new patterns for the inner nacelles for the 350 original series ship. These are some custom name decals for the 537 refit. Every font and size is covered in these decals so that you can give your AMT 537 refit a custom name. I've also printed up several sets of Arthur Pendragon's decals in different shades, colors, and saturations for friends and clients. Uh, I had a couple orders for these to go along with some of the other various decals. This is the strongback decal that I made for Scott's Dreadnought. That'll go on the 1/350th refit era Dreadnought. Well, I do have some other original series and refit decals, but this is all I've got to show right now. I've been taking each one of these sheets and spraying them with clear lacquer so that they'll seal really nicely and they'll be easy to apply with just a little bit extra thickness. All right, let's uh, get on with some more model building. Okay, here's my buddy Jack's 1/350th original series ship. I'm getting ready to finish this up as soon as possible. He bought the Tenet control set for the electronics, but I'm uh, changing it up from a 9 volt system to a 12 volt system and I'm adding some of these 3 millimeter pre-wired 12 volt LEDs to get into tight places like the pylons etc. As you can see here I've used some chrome vinyl on these inner nacelle parts. Now I did a test on my first set of decals and they weren't quite right it weren't quite exactly what I wanted, weren't exactly the right measurement, so I just printed up a new set. I'm going to try those out on some new chrome film. These go on the insides of the nacelles. I've blacked out most of the windows as per the production version. As you can see, I've frosted each one of the windows with 400 grit sandpaper in the back. Then I used a black sharpie to black out the windows that Jack didn't want lit like on the production version. Now I've done that for all the interior windows. Now that I'm ready to light it, I'm going to go ahead and start putting all these in, gluing everything together, and getting everything ready to do the final lighting on this so I can sew this up here pretty soon and get it done, I hope. Again, as I stated in a previous movie, I bought some of these little glitter thingies. These are going to go on the inside of the nacelles right here on the forward dome 
where the spinnies and the blades and all the pretty little blinkies show. Because this is exactly what they did in the TV series. They put broken shards of mirrors all around the lights. Now the tenant controls will not use this piece, but I'm still going to be using some of these little blinkies or flashies, mirrors, whatever. Now I cast these hemispheres for the S curves on the rear of the nacelles in clear. Still waiting to hear back from Jack if he wants the clear or the pearl hemispheres. Now as you can see, the pile or the nacelles are still warped after all of this time and after being taped together multiple times. So what I'm going to do is finish up the work on the electronics and I'm going to glue all these nacelle pieces together, run the electronic wire down through the pylons and make sure that all these the cells from the all the way down the length are fully secure when I put the glue in there to, to make sure that these things do not warp after they've been glued together. And I'm not going to go forward with this build until I'm damn sure that these pylon or these nacelles do not split apart. This is where I'm going to be using the three millimeter LEDs right there where the lights go well you didn't see it on the original series production version but you did on the enhanced if you want to call that enhanced at any rate this is right where i'm getting ready to start stuffing electronics i've already done a light test on this and you will see this later in the movie and here we have the 1 120th bc deck i'm still working on this I'm getting ready to do a finish sand on this and maybe go over it one more time with a thin layer of 3M spot putty. Then I'm going to start doing the final sanding and shaping and get this ready to go into silicone. Anyway, that's where we're at on this. I will try to show another shot of this later in the video. Okay, this is Mark's 1 350th original series that I'm working on right here on the main workbench. I had to cut out all the extra windows and I will tell you I broke two X-Acto blades so I've been using this handy dandy heavy duty carpet knife or box cutter whatever you want to call it from Husky I got three of these for nine dollars I've been using these to make the primary cuts and then using the X-Acto to do the finish cut so far they've turned out really nice as you can see, all the windows are opened up because he wanted all the windows lit and this had some extra windows. This is supposedly the Premier Edition version of the model. This is going to be a cross between a pilot version and a pseudo production version. I guess you could call it a transition ship. This is what Mark wanted and I'm making this model to suit the purchaser slash buyer slash owner. I don't care whether it's canon or not, it's what he wants and that's what counts. Okay, this is Mark's 1 350th original series and I just had to show this. I have taped and retaped these pylon or these nacelles in engineering hall half a dozen times. Now, if you look here, it's still pulling against the tape. It wants to warp back into shape no matter what. So I'm going to have to pull all the masking tape off of here, clean all the masking tape adhesive off with 100% isopropyl alcohol, heat all the, all the parts again in a warm water bath, you know, hot tap water, about as hot as it can get, about 120, 130 degrees. Soak all the parts in warm water, warm tap water. Dry everything off real quick, tape everything back up, and hope that it holds its shape. I've never had a model warp this badly, and once again, I have to say, this is the third or fourth of these ships, and every one of them's been the same. I have not had one yet that didn't have the pylons continue to warp back into their original shape. All right, well, we'll check back on this later or another day. All right, as you see, I just got just got done sanding 
Mark's lower primary hull again. I'm trying to eliminate most of those ridiculous grid lines, but keep just a faint hint that they're still there, that they were originally there. Just a shadow of what was originally there. As you can see, I used a sanding sponge to do so. Now I'll take that in and wash that out and it'll be like new. Now I wanted to show this for now. You'll have to excuse my voice. I'm getting over a case of pneumonia. But I'm back on it and I'm getting better. So anyway, this is the paint that I use for the light gray. This is the perfect color. Okay, now some of the primers have a greenish hue, some have a bluish hue. This has a more neutral hue and it almost perfectly matches the color of what you see on screen. Rust-Oleum Professional Primer. Fast drying, any angle spray, high output tip. This stuff, I get it at uh, Home Depot for about five or six bucks a can. This comes in really handy and this enamel just sprays on beautifully and if you let it set up, it has a nice smooth even coat on anything. And this helps to get down in those cracks and hide all those two deep recesses. Now for the dark gray for the details, I don't have one to show you but I'll show later. For the dark gray for the detail, I use this Krylon gray primer. Okay, I don't have any other name for it. it. Dries in 10 minutes, but as you can see by the tip of it, it's darker. It's a good shade or two darker than the rest of the ship, so that gives you the contrast for the detail parts, and it's almost, again, a perfect match for what you see on screen and the actual model. All right, I'm going to dry this off with a dry towel and get all the uh, excess paint powder off reshoot this I'm gonna take these in both halves of both nacelles and soak them in hot tap water dry them off real quick tape them together and shove them back in the freezer and see if I can't get them to take the shape instead of warping on me alright more to come in a little bit we'll see how everything looks Okay, I'm running the uh, hot tap water over the nacelles. I'm going to let them sit in here just long enough to where they get the full, brain, uh, full effect of the hot water. I've got my tape handy and I've got my towel handy. So as soon as I pull these halves out one at a time, I'm going to dry them off real quick, assemble the crack halves to each other, tape them and throw them in the freezer. Okay, as you can see, I'm working on several different projects today, trying to get caught up after the last week of dealing with the case of pneumonia. At any rate, I've got the same issue with the engineering hall on Mark's ship as I had with the nacelles. Now, if you see there, you'll see some masking tape adhesive is built up. Now, what do I do about that? Well, that's really simple, and I'm going to show you. You get some 91% isopropyl alcohol or 100% alcohol if you can. You use a soft cotton cloth or cotton swabs or cotton balls. Soak them in the alcohol and then use that. Use the alcohol laden cotton swabs or cotton balls to rub off the adhesive. I'll show you. Now keep an eye on that spot for just a second. Now I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take a napkin or a paper towel, soak it in alcohol, and I'm going to rub all that adhesive off. Okay, there you have it, folks. Not a single bit of adhesive left on there. All I used was a paper towel and some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Took off every bit of the adhesive, and didn't bother the paint one bit. In fact, the only thing it's going to do to the enamel is act as a desiccant and dry it out. So that's a nice little trick to have on hand. If you mask something off to do a touch up on enamel or gloss, enamel, even lacquer. Just a quick pass. Now on that, 
I had to set the paper towel on there, the saturated part of the paper towel on there, for just a few seconds and then start rubbing and it came right off. So there you go, another tip, trick, and special extra from Joe the Modeler. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at the inner part of the port side of the engineering hall. I thought there were some extra square windows that needed to be cut out here. But it appears that there does not. There are only perhaps some extra round windows that could be drilled out. I'm going to take the time and double check with the directions and with my friend Mark before I go adding a whole lot of extra work for nothing more than a little a couple of more pinholes so we'll have to pick this up at another time perhaps another movie alright well so much for that okay Mark wants all the windows lit up on this baby so guess what? I'm going to cut that one window out on both sides of the neck. Then I'm going to retape these two pieces back together, shoot them with another thick coat of that primer that I showed earlier. And I'm going to check on the engineering hull because I'm getting ready to do the same thing to the engineering hull that I did to the nacelles and that's soak it in hot water, dry it off real quick, tape it together and shove it in the freezer. We'll see how that turns out a little bit later. Hang in there, more to come. Okay, now, you can see here, you can just maybe make out where I made the cut for that window on the inside. I used this big husky carpet knife. Then I'm gonna go to the X-Acto knife. All right, be right back. Okay, as you can see, I cut out this window right there. Now, what you need to do when you're cutting these extra windows out, if you're going to, you see this little post here? Okay, you want to avoid that at all cost in the beginning. You want to cut away from that. Use your um, carpet knife or whatever to make your first deep cuts, cutting away from that post. Cut your top and your bottom first. Get good deep cuts on the top and the bottom. Then cut over on this side using your X-Acto. Then make your last cut over here and make sure to use the post as your guide. That's the best way to get these windows out. Now. You can just barely tell that that's not factory, even up close. When I'm done with this, you will not be able to tell which was a factory window and which was the one I cut out with my egg Zacto. All right, let's have a look at the uh, Viper. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still out of it <laughs> a little bit. Um, Okay, I removed the tape that was down here now, and then I shot it with a coat of heavy white, and I've let it cure for days while I was sick. So I'm going to sand that down, and then I'm going to hit it with a light coat of white, because I want to smooth everything out and get this ready for assembly. Now, I was going to uh, use the rear exhaust on this, but since I had one left over from another kit that I had not finished as a result of having to throw it back on the shelf after another emergency. Anyway, I'm going to use this exhaust. I'm going to take these exhaust ports off, shoot this with uh, flat white back here on the firewall, then do some detail work and use this one. I'll use this one on the other kit when I get a chance to finish it. This is going to be a down and dirty 
uh, model build. This is going to a friend of mine in California, a special effects guy by the name of, well, his initials are Gabriel Kerner. <laughs> yeah, this is going out to my friend Gabe. I've been promising him one of these for a while, so he wants his to look pristine, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it look like it just came out of the factory, and it's in flight. So, check it out, Gabriel. We'll get back at this later. All right, I finished sanding the lower primary hull, dried it off with a paper towel, got all the loose uh, dust off of it and the neck, and shot both pieces with this gray primer as I showed earlier. Now, it looks a little thick and a little mottled now, but trust me, it'll level out and it'll look smooth, smooth, smooth when we come back a little bit later. Okay, I've dismantled all the parts from and have untaped Jack's nacelles and pylons. I'm preparing to put the 3 millimeter white LEDs into the pylons because Jack wants the lights, the windows on the pylons lit. Now I'm going to have to clean up some tape adhesive from the pylons like I did on Mark, so I'm going to do that as well. And I'm going to mask off these details here and paint them the darker gray. So we'll get back to this very shortly. Now I wanted to show a couple of things and speak to a couple of things. Okay, this is the darker paint that I was telling you about earlier. And this is the color of the details. And this almost perfectly matches the color of the styrene parts that uh, these were cast in or injection molded in. Now this paint, I want to tell you how I did this paint. This paint was that light gray enamel with a lot of sanding and filling of the um, grid lines. All the uh, wear detail on the leading edge of the primary hull was done in pastels and chalk and charcoal. Now, what I did when it was all said and done was I shot everything with clear lacquer, a fine coat of clear lacquer, applied all the details and decals, then I shot it with a coat of matte finished lacquer. Now I'm doing my best to make this look absolutely studio accurate because as soon as I get this done I'm going to film it in front of my green screen just like Lance's refit and I'm gonna make sure to get a lot of film because I wanna see the two ships interacting and I've got something really special planned for Scott's Dreadnought and I'm gonna use Lance's refit to do a little scene with Scott's Dreadnought at any rate, at any rate that's all refit stuff anyway now I've got some of this real lenticular material that I'm going to use for the impulse engine. This is going to add a really nice and realistic looking effect to give you that grill that should be back there, at least so I thought at any rate. Okay, that's where we're at now. Now I need to do a light test on the pylons. Okay, here's the light test on the pylons looks good tastes great less filling exactly what I needed I got a shift of position just slightly on the LED here so that it lights up these two come on focus you can do it okay there we go so it lights up these two windows evenly this one looks good so I've got everything cleaned out and placed exactly where I need it so this will work as a light test for Jack and Marks, because I'm going to do them both exactly the same way. There you go. 3 millimeter pre-wired 12 volt LEDs. Boy, they come in handy. Woohoo! Now I'm just running this off a 9 volt battery and they're bright as they need to be. There's no light leakage, so I've obviously done the masking properly. 
and there's no uh, light leakage on either side of the pylons. So I'm sold. All right, this is Jack's Tenet Controls electronic circuit, and I have to say this is a valiant effort. Credit where credit is due. Now this gives you a nice looking warp field effect. You've got your spinnies and you've got your pseudo random blinkies that sort of match what you see on screen. Now this is outside of the uh, Bussard collector or dome, hemisphere, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to uh, wire it on the inside and see how it looks. I've done this once before, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Then I'm going to do some finish sanding on the two domes and start getting all this, this ship ready to fill up with lighting. Okay, there we go. That's inside the nacelle dome, and I've got to tell you, I'm looking at the actual effect while I'm looking at the screen as it's recording. And I have to tell you that the, the real effect looks much better. This camera is not picking up all the subtle nuances. I wish it did, because I think this guy's done a fine job. However, and I hate to say it, I've got a slightly different idea that I think might work out nice as well. <coughs> All right. Now I just pulled these out of the freezer and let them thaw out. Let's see if they're going to hold their shape after having been soaked in hot water, quickly dried off, taped together, shoved in the freezer, frozen solid, pulled out, and thawed. Let's see if maybe they'll hold their shape. Be right back. And the answer thus far is a big fat no. My disgust is self-evident. So that means when I go to do a final assembly on these parts, I'm going to have to use an ample amount of adhesive, glue, bonding agent, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to have to make sure I keep them taped together for a good long while before I think about pulling them apart because that, that pulling force is always going to be there. That force that's got those parts warped after they cooled at the factory is always going to be tugging at those points. I don't know what else to try. I'm going to have to come up with something. That's just unacceptable. Well, as you can see here, I went back over these nacelle domes with some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper and when I did it at the time I did it with 400 and I had it wet. Now I'm going to go over these one more time lightly with 600 grit and I'm going to use it wet as well. This gives you a really nice frosting effect and you don't have to buy a can of the frosting paint or build up a bunch of paint that you don't need. This does give you a really good effect, and I'll show that when I do another demonstration on uh, the electronics in the next movie. Okay, let's talk about masking for paint. All right. Now, I took masking tape and masked off areas that only that I wanted painted. I made sure to be very close to the edge, or right on the edge, everywhere that I masked. Now, I can take a piece of typing paper or newspaper or what have you and mask the rest of the entire ship off, and I'll show that in a minute, so that when I shoot this with my desired color, I will only paint the area that I want painted and will not get paint anywhere else. If done properly, this is a great way to paint in isolated areas and make sure that you get full coverage 
and the color that you want without getting the color all over everything else. Okay, as you can see, I masked off the rest of the ship so that there will be no overspray. All I've got to do is hit these two different areas with two different colors, let it dry for about 15 minutes, then unmask and do the other side. Now this may seem like a lot of work. I did use a little extra masking tape in lieu of more pa uh, typing paper, but it's going to be worth it in the end. Anyway, I'll show that in a minute. Okay. As you can see, I painted two different colors, and yes, that's copper, copper and black on one side. Now, as soon as this dries, about 15, 20 minutes where it dries enough for me to take the tape off, I'm going to take the tape off and we'll see how this looks after having been masked. A little extra time makes a big difference. Here we have yet another economical circuit for your starships. This is uh, a set of running lights or chaser lights for like landing lights in your shuttle bay. This is a Veloman circuit. Goes for about ten or twelve dollars online, plus a couple of bucks for shipping. You got a reset switch here. You've got your program switch here. As you can see, you get a little running light pattern or chaser light pattern very similar to the previous circuits that we showed before only instead of using a decade counter it's using a um, different sequence or chip same thing almost this is a 4015 I think instead of a 4017 this is your main output chip as with the other circuits the 555 timer feeds the signal into the 4015, the resistor and capacitor settings as well as the potentiometer sets up your speed adjustment. Now as you can see here with a little tweaking I can get it going at a better rate of speed. Okay, it all depends on what you want so you can set it to whatever speed you like. Additionally, if you press the program switch more than once you'll have two or three lights going all at once. See there? Not bad for 10 or 12 bucks. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than 50, 75 or 100 dollars. At any rate, that's another circuit that's easily purchased through eBay or Amazon.com or your favorite electronics store. Okay, I got an email asking me to do a decal demonstration. You know, I really can't do the demonstration and hold the camera. So I'm going to give you a, a little breakdown, then take it step by step. Okay, first of all, you have to have a glossy surface on the part that you're going to decal. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, this is really glossy. It's pearl, but it's not showing up so much in the camera right now. Now, these are Arthur Pendragon's decals. These are the decals that he gave away to everybody over at Starship Modeler years ago. As I said, I'm going to be working on my own set. But, for now, I'm going to use these to do this demonstration. Now, after you've got a good glossy surface, as you can see here, you're going to need to cut out the little yellow squares with an X-Acto because these parts are already in the ship. So, I'm going to have to make an opening for those. Now, other than that, I've taken these and I've cut very closely to the border, except for on these three pieces. As you can see here, there are nine total decals that go on this one section of ship. And that's a lot of decal work in close proximity, one decal to the next. All right, now, you cut as close as you can to the actual decal. You have a glossy surface, and you make sure, or I do anyway, I see, seal my decal paper with clear acrylic, either gloss or matte finish, depending on what I need. Now, this is going to be a matte finish, so I'm going to go ahead and go over it with a matte finish after I apply them. 
but I did shoot this with a couple of coats of clear lacquer matte before I cut them out I let the, the lacquer dry for about three days so I'm good to go I can apply these decals the lacquer seals the decals helps keep them some, from silvering and cracking and breaking as soon as you apply them you'll let the part dry then go over the whole thing with a little bit of clear matte or gloss whichever you prefer all right I'll show this when it's done and we'll go over things one more time here's another little something I made up I made this up for Jack's base this 22 inch original series command Delta this is made out of 3 8 acrylic precision laser cut with gold laminate in the center now this is going to sit on top of um, Jack's case he's essentially he's got a cabinet that's going to hold the electronics for his original series buildup and this is going right on top of it underneath the Enterprise I think this adds for a nice touch this is great to have one of these hanging on your wall or use it as a model base all right here's where we left off with the Mars attacks model I'm getting ready to untape the arms and legs and match the blue paint that's on the main body I'm going to do some more paint on the face of the victim and on the Martian head now as a note I painted this originally with banner red and later went back over it with cherry red the cherry red is a bit too deep so I'm gonna sand this down slightly and hit it with a coat of banner red because I think that matches the color scheme more appropriately we'll have another look at this a little bit later on well as you can see here I've got a little more work done on the Martian Mars attacks model got a couple more layers of paint to add and add some detail and this is where it's at right now this is just a base coat on the face I'm gonna be going over that with a lot of detail and some washes some different colors and I'm gonna be adding even a little more color to the base and I'm gonna seal all these uh, different parts right here and I'm going with a different color on the tanks so that's where we're at now all right I've moved removed all the masking tape off of the upper primary hull I've got a little bit of cleanup as you can see there and a little touch up and this is good to go I'm getting ready to start doing all of the masking on this bad boy then I'm gonna add the bridge and the fiber optics so there we are on that check back with this a little bit later well as you can see here these are the next two major parts of the 50 inch refit to go into silicone now we've already molded these rear fins and we've molded these parts so we've got molds for those so when I combine these these all these pieces here the grill the housing and the base on both of these these are going into silicone next I really wanted to get these into silicone a couple of weeks ago but long story short I got hit with a couple of things all at once and real life took precedence at any rate we'll see how this turns out in a week or two